In 2011, China Economic Weekly published a report titled The Problem of Ailing Dams, the Threat of 40,000 At-Risk Reservoirs. According to the report, more than half of the reservoirs were in danger due to the lack of necessary maintenance funds during their decades of operation. The vast majority of China's 40,000-plus at-risk reservoirs were located in rural areas, with some in the upper reaches of counties and cities. The report described 179 cities in China with a basin of water over their heads, accounting for more than 25% of the cities in mainland China. The Chinese government cannot effectively manage the construction quality of reservoirs and dams, but it can harshly punish the officials who manage the dams as China has implemented a dam safety responsibility system. The reservoirs cannot hold enough water to actually store the flood when it arrives. The dam's quality is without guarantee, so when the rainy season arrives, officials have no choice but to discharge water to keep the dam from collapsing to save their jobs. Why is it that the public is not notified or explicitly warned of a dam discharge in China? Why do officials choose to release water without warning? In previous videos, we quoted a Chinese official saying that a reservoir can only be released secretly and no notice can be given to the public. If no notice is given, the catastrophic result is considered a natural disaster and requires no compensation paid out. In addition to the registered reservoir dams, there are many small, abandoned dams in China. In the western countries, owners of such dams must remove the dams and clean the sediment so that everything would be in the same condition after removal as before the dams were built. According to regulations in China, abandoned dams are only required to be removed from the government registry. Although they still exist physically, they are no longer in existence as far as the government is concerned. For many experts, the large number of reservoirs and dams have changed the natural ecosystem in China. An alarming number of reservoirs have resulted in the accelerated deterioration of China's water resources. For example, in China's Zhejiang province, the local forestry bureau claims that the forest coverage in the province is 61%. According to environmental theory, severe floods and droughts rarely occur when the forest coverage is above 30%. This is because the forest itself is an enormous reservoir and when water is scarce, the soil will release its water. However, the CCP has built at least 30 large reservoirs in Zhejiang province after it came to power. Chinese media reported that there has been very little precipitation in Zhejiang province since October last year and into this year, which is considered the worst drought in 30 to 50 years. As a result, the reservoirs intercept water, further exasperating the water shortage downstream and competing for water with the people who need it, including farmers during the dry season. So, how much of China's GDP is contributed by the construction of reservoirs and dams and the generation of electricity? Because the Chinese government's data is not transparent, we can only speculate. What is certain is that the collapse of reservoirs and dams and the unpredictable flooding have caused devastating disasters in China, including the massive loss of life and property. But in China's peculiar system, few officials and experts seem willing to bring this to light. China's Ministry of Water Resources declared earlier in the year that China will accelerate the construction of 150 major water conservancy projects in 2021. This is not surprising in communist China, where the same story has been repeated, only now increasingly so. 46 years ago, at this time of the year, in August 1975, a massive dam failure occurred, again in China's Henan province. 62 reservoirs, including the Banqiu Reservoir, collapsed one after another under the impact of the extremely heavy rainfall generated by Typhoon Nina. The Banqiu Reservoir was a large project built according to the so-called 1 in 100 year flood design and 1 in 1000 year flood check. The official figure announced by the CCP was 26,000 deaths, but according to local documentation, accounts from various sources, and estimates from overseas media, the dam collapse killed about 200,000 to 400,000 Chinese people.
Before its collapse at 19.30 on August 7, 1975, the reservoir management sent an emergency telegram to its superiors and requested instructions on what to do. At 12.20 a.m. on the 8th, the local municipal government sent a second emergency telegram to the provincial committee to request the use of bombers to blow up the secondary spillway to ensure the safety of the dam. But the first and second emergency calls received no reply and got nowhere. The reservoir authority did not dare to take any emergency measures without instructions from the higher level. By the time the third emergency call was sent, the reservoir had already started to breach. The officials who received the first urgent telegram made an emergency call at night to the then first vice premier Deng Xiaoping, but his family hung up the call, saying that they could talk about business in the morning. At that time, Deng was playing mahjong with another leader through the night. At 1.30 a.m. on August 8, the floodwaters rushed out of the reservoir with the height of the water reaching more than 7 meters and rushing downstream at a speed of 6 meters per second. In just 6 hours, the Banqiu Reservoir dumped 700 million cubic meters of floodwater downstream. Seven counties were submerged and many reservoirs in the middle and lower reaches of the Huai River had to be blasted open. Residents did not receive notice and perished in the floods before they could escape. Deng's Mahjong game continued until about 5 a.m. on the 8th when the Banqiu Reservoir had collapsed for more than three hours. When Deng found out about the breach, he did not immediately order the army to rescue but reported it to Mao Zedong following the bureaucratic procedure. The 82-year-old Mao was said to have thought for a long time before agreeing to the army's participation in the disaster relief. The exact number of deaths caused by the Banqiu Dam collapse remains a secret in the history of Communist China. Let's return to the present day in Henan. In the footage, we see volunteer civilians in Jiuyin County, but not government rescue workers. By this time, in Henan province, there was not only a big flood, but also a sudden outbreak of COVID-19. On August 1, the government asked all rescue teams to evacuate due to the outbreak. The public is very worried as to how the local victims will survive. At the end of July, more than 60 large and medium-sized reservoirs in Henan province have exceeded the flood limit. Henan province has started a large-scale opening of gates or blowing up dams to release flood water. Most of the flood water in Henan will flow into the Huai River Basin and its downstream in Henwei province. The official mentioned above, who revealed why Chinese officials covertly release flood water, is from Anwei province. Anwei is the most heavily flooded area in China because of its low-lying terrain. Floodwaters from the Yangtze, Huai, and Yellow Rivers are discharged into this province. In late July and August, hundreds of thousands of villagers in this province will leave their homes and tens of thousands of acres of arable land will be turned into a sea, and it has been so year after year. Now the test for the reservoirs in Nanwei province is coming. The dams in China have collapsed and can be built again, but too many lives will never come back. Okay.